This Seattle mansion, named Rose Red, built nearly a century ago, is believed by many to possess a spirit so strong that 26 people have died or disappeared within its walls without explanation until now. With the recent discovery of the intimate diary of Ellen Rimbauer, lady of the house and Rose Red's last living occupant, the baffling history of this legendary house is beginning to take shape. We finally have concrete evidence. Such a fascinating life. For the next half hour, a story of mystery, murder, and the supernatural, all born of a house known simply as Rose Red. It's a mystery so intriguing, author Stephen King is bringing the story of a new controversial investigation inside Rose Red to ABC television later this month. This investigation will either shed new light on Rose Red or add another chapter to its bizarre history. The doors are open now. Maybe everything will be put to rest. There is death. I can see it. The story of Rose Red begins in Seattle, Washington, 1907, a booming city at a time for the rich and powerful to grow even more so. John P. Rimbauer was a dashing tycoon on the make who had achieved wealth and influence through his partnership in the Omnicron Oil Company. John eagerly sought a wife to make his world complete. Ellen Gilchrist, a beautiful debutante born into Seattle's burgeoning high society, caught his eye immediately. After a brief courtship, they were married in an opulent ceremony. John was 40, Ellen was 20. In those days, it was not unusual for wealthy older men to take as their wives uh, women who were maybe half their age. So John and Ellen Rimbauer's relationship was not unusual at all in that respect. Once married, John and Ellen set off on a year-long around-the-world honeymoon. John wanted to increase his international contacts for the sake of a petroleum empire he was building. And he wanted Ellen to collect as many works of art, uh, bolts of exotic fabric, furniture, sets of china, and anything else that took her eye for the purpose of decorating their gigantic mansion, which was fast approaching completion back here in Seattle. John was building an extravagant wedding gift for his young bride, an architectural masterpiece Ellen would later christen Rose Red. Yeah, I have been fascinated with, uh, with Rose Red for, for years. Dr. Joyce Reardon is a professor of parapsychology at Seattle's Beaumont University. In June of 1998, she happened upon the private diary of Ellen Rimbauer. In reading it, she discovered more than the simple daily observations of a young socialite from early 20th century Seattle. She found a source that finally gives credibility to many of the bizarre stories born of the Rimbauer home. The level of detail of life at Rose Red in the pages of the diary, it's astonishing. We finally have concrete evidence. I mean, the diary substantiates uh, what were once considered only rumors about Rose Red. Rose Red seemed marred by tragedy from the first day of construction. Harsh weather, a breakneck pace, and a demanding client were not the only challenges the workers faced. Some claim that the land itself was haunted, even before the foundation was put up, and that the men on the site literally went crazy, acting out, fighting. One day, a foreman was killed after it had an argument with a teamster who was delivering some building supplies. They'd exchanged a few words, and all of a sudden, this teamster took out a shotgun and blew the foreman's head off. Well, the teamster ended up in prison, claiming that he didn't remember a thing that had happened that day until he woke up in the cell after they booked him. To the best of our knowledge, the house was built on a sacred burial ground. Um, I mean, back when Rose Red was being built, stories were circulating that when John Rimbauer's workers were digging the land for the foundation, they unearthed native remains and artifacts um, 
most of which were just were just carted off by the wagon load and incinerated. Um, this is probably where the notion that there are spirits occupying the land came from. But archaeologically speaking, we think it's an important site and it needs to be very carefully and very respectfully examined. John Rimbauer insisted that the stories of human remains being found on his property were rumors and demanded that construction continue. Ellen's diary reveals that this decision may have been his undoing, but John was never one to second guess himself. John is a man who takes control of any situation the moment he enters it. It is the consistency in him that I believe makes him such a formidable businessman. None would dare cross him, few dare challenge him. John's business practices were at times ruthless. Ellen writes about one such occasion when John blackmailed his partner in Omnicron Oil, Douglas Posey. John threatened to reveal the man's secret homosexual lifestyle unless Posey agreed to give up his shares in the company. The man was so broken by John's ultimatum, he hung himself in the parlor of Rose Red. His suicide was yet another tragedy for the house and its occupants. Well, there's been a lot of things written about my family um, in public records, and uh, who's to say if they're, if they're accurate or not, but when the diary appeared, uh, it, it really gives insight and sheds light on, on the personal life. September 9th, 1909. I write with weak hand, but I will not be denied the opportunity of recording the most important day in my brief life. 11 hours ago, in the wee hours of the morning, I gave birth to a son. I have called him Adam, for he is the first. Our annual ball was attended by over 250. All ate dinner in one of six rooms, and then dancing in the grand ballroom. Despite attempts at a normal life with children and celebrations, the diary suggests an increasingly dark presence in the house. Several of our guests at the party related to me that they became frightfully lost while touring the house on their own. I found myself amused by this, actually, as I was myself lost just a day or so ago. For a moment, I actually believed the hallway had looked entirely different just minutes earlier. Can you imagine? But Ellen's contentment at Rose Red would be short-lived. She soon realized that her husband John was engaged in extramarital affairs. Countless times, Ellen vents in her diary about witnessing John's sexual indiscretions. I see you with women, young women, barely budding. I see you perform unspeakable acts. With each passing transgression, Ellen's life at Rose Red became even more lonely. She was shaken by a dark empathy that seemed to emanate from the very walls of the house. It seems that as soon as John and Ellen moved into Rose Red, Ellen began to realize the power of the house. As she wrote early on that something not of this earth had a hand in the um, strange and often gruesome goings on there. As she explained in her diary, it's as though the house was in tune with her thoughts which is unbelievable. My fears have found their way into my prayers, and I find myself in sin, making silent requests to the powers that surround us to punish John Rimbauer if any transgression be known. Just last week, as I made such a dark prayer at the side of my bed, an enormous wind, quite like nothing I've ever seen, took wing and delivered not only a branch, but an entire tree to my window, shattering glass and throwing debris as it was ripped from its roots. In a series of bizarre incidents, Rose Red appeared to take on a life of its own. Over a period of just a few months, a wealthy friend of the Rimbauers and two young female servants went missing inside the house. It seemed that the house was carrying out its own brand of justice. A stable master who had taken advantage of some of the girls employed at the house was found trampled to death by one of the stallions in his care. Over the next 10 years, nearly 20 people would vanish or be found dead. It's really fascinating. There's been so much speculation over the years about what really happened in that house. Uh, many people are afraid to talk about it. A lot of people romanticize it. Of course, you have this huge castle of home with Ellen, the beautiful lady in white, married to 
the dashing John Rimbauer. But since Ellen's diary has been found, it's clear that their life was no fairy tale. In her diary, Ellen often made mention of another unique aspect of the house's personality. According to her entries, Ellen believed that Rose Red was able to change size and shape on its own. The house is impossibly large. Believe this or not, dear diary, we have all witnessed physical transformations. Hallways change structure and appearance behind your back. Rooms disappear. What is going on? How can it be a physical structure, a building, and yet fluid as water, a chameleon? Once a hallway, now a ballroom, once a basement, now a dungeon. Determining the actual layout of Rose Red has been a constant challenge in my research. Even taking into account the many additions and, and modifications that Ellen Rembauer ordered done to the house, when you compare the original blueprints with the last observations made in the early 70s, it just doesn't make sense. I can't explain it, but Rose Red has somehow changed on its own. There have been reports that it's difficult to calculate the definitive number of rooms inside the house because the structure is constantly changing. That's ridiculous. It's scientifically impossible for building materials to regenerate and grow on their own. Part of my research involves examining the behavior of everyday building materials under stresses of all kinds. If my lab had run across wooden beams that grow or stretch on their own, you would have heard about it. We know from the diary that when unusual or supernatural things would happen inside Rose Red, um, Ellen relied on the help of her handmaid, Sukina, as a trusted confidant. Sukina was a very important ally as Ellen came to terms with the powers of the house. February 19th, 1923. I don't know if Sukina suggested it or if perhaps it was I, but a clear need exists for the departure of John Rimbauer. Something must be done. I fear it is up to me to decide exactly what. Some said it was suicide. The death certificate said only accidental. Some said the house actually pushed him out of the window. After John's death, the house seemed to grow quiet, and Ellen became more withdrawn than ever. As she grew older, she suffered mental breakdowns. Arthritis kept her from writing regular diary entries, but she was able to record some of her experiences. The house eventually claimed her beloved Sukina. Then, in 1934, the popular film actress, Deanna Petri, vanished during a party at Rose Red. The house then lay virtually dormant until an ill-fated expedition in 1970. My mentor, uh, Dr. Max Bernstein. He was a progressive leader in research of psychic phenomenon, modern parapsychology. He led a research team into Rose Red back in 1970. During the exploration, he vanished inside the house. Even after an extensive search and rescue operation, no clues as to his whereabouts were ever uncovered. Uh, members of his research team never spoke much about what really happened that day. Of course, average folks think it's all a hoax, you know, he couldn't just have disappeared that way. People don't just disappear. The last disappearance at Rose Red was recorded in 1972, when 62-year-old Liza Albert became separated from a tour led by the Seattle Historical Society. All that was ever found was her blood-stained purse in a room not intended to be part of the tour. From its unexpected discovery at a Seattle area estate sale, the simple diary of one woman's extraordinary life has helped to rekindle interest in uncovering the secrets behind the psychic power of a mansion known as Rose Red. Joyce Reardon has assembled a group of experts in the paranormal who are to join her in the exploration to reawaken the spirit of Rose Red. You really can't deny With permission that. from Stephen Rimbauer, the last surviving member of the immediate family, they will be given one weekend to investigate this most notorious of houses. The expedition is not without protest by many in the psychic community who believe Rose Red is a dormant cell 
and that Reardon's exploration is a careless invasion of a powerful sleeping giant. It's very naive for people to ignore the evil energy of that house. If you have a true understanding of the supernatural, you know that it will reveal itself to you. You don't go looking for it. I see it as an invitation. I'm there to give the entities someone to respond to, uh, to give them permission to be heard, uh, to be seen, hopefully. No, I don't see it as an invasion at all. No. 26 people have either disappeared or died in Rose Red in a 60 year time span. It's not just a series of coincidences. This is a result of paranormal activity. I am going into Rose Red to record measurable psychic phenomena. Basically, my intent is to have documented proof that quantifiable entities exist in Rose Red. I, I really don't know what to think about the old house. Um, it, it, it's really been nothing but a burden to my family since great-grandfather started building it. I support Dr. Reardon's project, but as soon as she's done with the research, I have plans to demolish the house and sell the property. Because there were reports of human remains at the Rose Red site when it was being built, um, it has to be treated as a potentially sacred site. Uh, I think the notion that, that there's some secret inside the house, I, I think that's pure folly. But the land on which the house is built is is a burial ground and and it needs to be examined it needs to have its origins traced and it needs eventually to be returned to the native people to to whom it once belonged we all have critics don't we this is important for me this is visceral for me i have to do this Public interest in the Rose Red Mansion and the diary of Ellen Rimbauer is intense. In fact, with the permission of the present-day Rimbauer estate, Hyperion Books has published the diary that Joyce Reardon discovered and edited. Well, we were all very impressed when uh, Joyce first brought in Ellen Rimbauer's diary. And uh, I really admire Ellen's writing style. I mean, it's so fluid, the way that she writes. and. I think the story is, is very solid, and it's got a national appeal. It's very rare that readers have such a great opportunity to, to see firsthand such a fascinating life. This diary is, is written with you know, such detail, this uh, documentation of paranormal activity and these frank sexual situations that you know, really make it a page turner. I mean, it's a book that you just really don't want to put down. It was an honor to edit Ellen's diary. It truly was. It really helped me to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Just, just a wealth of knowledge there. And of course, with it, I was able to secure funding and permission to put together my expedition through Rose Red. Couldn't have done that without it. Ellen Rimbauer's diary serves as a record of the world inside Rose Red for half a century. By interpreting the detailed accounts within the diary, Joyce Reardon has prepared herself for a look into the vast mansion with supposed portals into the paranormal. Are the dangers real? The fate of her study is uncertain, but for Joyce Reardon, the call to embrace the unknowns within Rose Red must be answered. Is it dangerous? Sure. Could it be life-threatening? Maybe. But if that's what it's going to take to make people believe in the power of the paranormal, I will take my chances. Because this is a golden opportunity to provide some truth. Author Stephen King will bring the story of Joyce Reardon's expedition to ABC television later this month. It captured everything that was in my imagination and more. What I liked about it was the idea of a house that starts to build itself. Entitled simply, Rose Red, King's special will air over three nights, documenting the incredible discoveries that Joyce and her team of specialists expect to encounter. I think that if they believe they know how things are gonna turn out, they're gonna be very surprised. 
Stephen King's role in bringing this special to television in such a dramatic fashion is sure to focus national attention on this most secretive and menacing of houses. February 19, 1928. We all, every one of us, heard Rose Red laugh last night. Laugh at me. It was the most frightening sound I've ever heard. If there is a game to this, she has clearly won. They are all gone, my loved ones. I am alone. Alone in my thoughts. Alone in my silence. Alone in this house. I shall fire the entire staff before she gets another of them. I shall dwell in this place alone for a time. Let her suffer. Let her fail. Perhaps then we can strike a bargain, this house and me. Houses are born bad. Houses like Rose Red. Dr. Joyce Reardon has found the key. If anyone can wake up Rose Red, she is the one. That will unlock the secrets. Are you holding the doors and windows closed? Of Rose Red. We shouldn't be here. Stephen King's Rose Red, Sunday, January 27th on ABC. Viewer discretion advised.